Hello friends, my name is Kisan and welcome you in this video tutorial. In this video tutorial, I am going to show you how to manage transaction in JDBC using a demo project. Uh, this project I have already created and uh, I have almost uh, coding I have completed offline uh, because there are so many files. Uh, we have so many I mean Java classes in this project so that's why uh, I have coded offline and I'm going to explain you each and every piece of code. So here let's start with the DB script. So I have a database table is called Citibank which contains uh, certain columns like account number, account balance, account type, account holder name and here account number is a primary key. And uh, I have applied not null constraint on the some few columns right. So pretty much simple. Now let's go through the database table. So I have created this table in database which is called JDBC DB which contains three columns uh, and uh, there are three account holders like John, Paul and Martin and which is having certain balance in his account. Right? So now, now let's start with the client program. So here this is my client program and from here just I have created a, an instance of uh, service IMPL and bank service interface which contains a uh, method is called font transfer which contains three uh, parameter like from account to account and amount so from account means uh, from which account I want to transfer the money so from this account I need to deduct the money to account on which account we want to deposit the money amount how much money I want to transfer so that's all about the fund transfer and implementation of this class is uh, implementation of this class is uh, bank service IMPL which implements this method and uh, that overrides the fund transfer method right and here I have written some code like I have created a connection object right by calling this get connection method which we have been using in many uh, previous video tutorial so this is pretty much simple class it's a db util class uh, which is responsible to return such the database connection so we can call this method by this class because this method is a static and when you call dbutil.getConnection right so before returning this connection first of all a static block will be executed and first of all class will be registered right jdbc driver managed class will be registered like this and we are just taking the connection from the get connection method of driver manager by passing the database url username and password right and same connection is going to return to the client and here on the top of the class i have declared all my database information as well as driver uh, database driver name now once you get the connection then here in uh, connection interface if you want to uh, uh, get rid of uh, problem like database problem like uh, when your uh, code is deployed in the multi threaded environment then you may have a dirty read uh, non dictable read and phantom read kind of problem so to resolve those problems we have a different kind of isolation level in jdbc so earlier we had gone through the transaction management in spring framework and there we have seen how to uh, get rid of this kind of problem so at the rate transactional annotation uh, we had a isolation attribute right and there uh, in spring framework also has a certain constant like read committed read uncommitted and all right so those constants basically helps you to get rid of uh, these problems, database problems when your code is deployed in the multi-thread environment. So here, connection interface, there are some co constant like uh, we have a constant, we have a four constants like uh, transaction none means uh, this will, transaction none is always equivalent to a transaction read uncommitted. So if you, if, if you are not using any constant, right? then by default this constant will be there right this isolation will be there and if you do not specify any isolation level then you may get the three kind of problem like you may get the dirty read non dictable read as well as, as well as phantom read problem what is problem these problems i have already discussed in the spring transaction management so please go and refer my those videos right so if you declare these two constant then you may get all three kind of problems but if you declare this problem transaction read committed then you may uh, you may 
uh, eliminate uh, dirty read problem but uh, still you, you can have a uh, non repeatable read as well as phantom read when you declare this constant transaction repeatable read then you can re uh, you can prevent the dirty read as well as non repeatable read problems but uh, still you have a phantom read problem but uh, if you declare this constant so transaction serializable then this is going to prevent all kind of problem like dirty read as well as not uh, dirty read non repeatable reads as well as phantom reads but uh, if you declare this constant then your application performance will be degraded right so because your transaction will be executed in the serialized manner so you cannot take advantage of con concurrency java concurrency that's the main issue right so uh, this uh, what constant you need to choose that depends on your requirement right if your code is deployed in the single threaded environment then you don't need to uh, select uh, transaction serializable right so that all depends on your requirement here i have uh, i have set it i mean transaction isolation level as a read committed right so this will basically if this code is getting deployed on the multi threaded environment this will prevent the dirty read problem right now in try block already we had discussed in the previous demo uh, how to manage transaction in jdbc so in try block first of all you need to make auto commit as a false right so that uh, control will be in your hand so uh, if, if if your jdbc connection is auto commit mode uh, which is by default then every sql statement is committed to the database upon its completion so that's why you need to make it um, false first of all and just i'm making call to the two method withdraw and uh, deposit method of my service layer if, the, if these two operations happen successfully then i would like to uh, commit the changes on the database side right if some exception arises uh, while calling uh, these two methods then the control will go to the catch block and here just i'm checking connection not equal to zero not equal to null then just i'm roll back the previous actions and finally just i'm closing the connection in the final block this is pretty straightforward so this is the way to handle the transaction in uh, jdbc right so uh, there are three there are uh, three reasons why we should uh, manage the transaction right so there are three reasons why you may want to uh, turn off auto commit and manage your own transaction first reason is that to increase performance because database is heat at the time of commit itself second reason is to maintain the integrity of your business processes now third reason to use distributed transactions so here i have taken an example of uh, local transaction but uh, in case uh, uh, if you have more than one database then you may be interested to handle distributed transaction and there is also a required transaction management right so this service class is pretty straightforward now let's move to the doll layer classes so here i can show you i have a doll layer interface first of all i have a doll layer interface which contains two method withdraw and deposit and uh, i have passed parameter like connection from account and to account and amount how, how much you, i want to transfer similarly deposit method takes connection from account to account as well as amount how much i want to transfer right so if you go to the doll layer and then here i have a class uh, two method three method two methods basically withdraw and deposit and i have a one private method here which is responsible to uh, get the information about the uh, account and that account number you need to specify so this is method this is the method which is going to use by this two public method so here first of all we have a withdraw withdraw method basically first uh, gets the bus uh, first of all i'm getting account information from the database by passing the account number right so this is pretty straightforward method so easily you can understand just i have a sql query by placeholder i am just pass uh, using prepare statement just i am setting this account number for this placeholder and i am calling execute method and just this is returning the current account details if this account does not exist in the database so this will be false and null will be returned to the caller so and here if account is not null if this account uh, if from account in database uh, from account exists in the database 
that means that will not be null then i do check where current balance is uh, if current balance is less than the amount right then you want to prevent the transfer right so th that's why i am throwing uh, just i have created a exception class insufficient balance exception and just i'm setting the message insufficient balance as and if this uh, account does not exist on the database side just i'm throwing account source account does not exist so i have another checked exception now i have created prepare statement by passing this sql query right uh, so just i'm i'm performing update operation like update city bank set account balance i want to update with the new balance for deposit as well as uh, withdrawal and for that account so just i'm passing the new balance new balance uh, for the withdrawal current balance just i'm deducting the amount and this balance i'm updating for this account number and finally executing just i'm printing a message so this much amount is transferred from this account to this account and deposit is very much similar right so business logic always similar but instead of here current balance i need to update with the amount deposit amount and just i'm executing and printing some message right so pretty straightforward now let me run this program so just i'm going to run for the positive scenario so positive scenario i want to transfer money from this account this is source account to this destination account and one thousand dollar i'm transferring so let's let me run so see so message is coming amount one thousand dollar is transferred from this account source account to this destination account and saying that amount one thousand deposited in the this destination account if i go then this should become 89 and this is 21 so if i refresh so it's working perfectly fine so this is for positive scenario uh, let's see if uh, i give the destination account wrong this account does not exist and if i run then see how it work now see saying that amount 1000 transfer from this account to this account right and i came up with an error saying that destination account does not exist that means we have handled the transaction so amount shouldn't be deducted from this account so if i refresh uh, so this should be 89000 and this should be 21000 if i refresh so see it's transaction is handling pro handling properly that's why amount is not deducted from the source account right so now i go to the client program and i'll undo the changes and if i want to transfer more than 89000 from the source account current balance is 81000 if i want to transfer 90000 then i should get an error as well you cannot transfer <coughs> more than the current balance so if i try to transfer more than the current balance then saying that insufficient court and this this figure will not be changed on the database side right but uh, if i transfer 1000 again then this should work perfectly fine right so now this is 88 and this is 22 so it's working perfectly fine right so now if you go to the database then uh, if uh, service layer then here i have given the code snippet if you do not handle the transaction then what will happen so if you do not handle transaction then what happen money will be deducted to the this account or will not be if while deducting the money if action happens successfully well but while depositing in the another account if some exception arises then money will be deducted in the source account but that will not be added into the destination account that's the wrong thing will happen that's why we require a transaction management so i hope you enjoyed learning this video uh, this code i am going to upload on the github and github location i will specify in the uh, video description itself if you have any query or questions please do post below to the video uh, i will try to answer those queries and uh, see you in next video video with some new stuff in uh, uh, java jdbc